What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Marvel Television, Brian, has been exceptional, Brian. X-Men 97, Brian. I don't recall anything as great as that before that. On television for Marvel TV. X-Men 97 and What If have been those two gems, Brian, that we've been excited for. I'm surprised they haven't been... They, Brian, we should get an all-year-round What If series because it's like, come on. There's so much you can pull from here. Let's let's not... You know what I'm saying? I know it takes some time to do animation, but you should have been started. You should be on episode 100 right now. Now we are... You know what I've been, before we get into it, Brian, you know what I've been thinking? How wrong we were about Loki. I think about that like, wow, we were so, we had it at the bottom and it went all the way to the top. Yeah. I hope, Brian, that we can be the same about these set of shows that are going to be coming up, Brian, because I am not looking forward to none of them. Your thoughts, Brian, and let's go down the list. Yeah. So to recap, Pablo and I did a variant of this of this show, uh, pun intended, way back when when the first slate of shows was announced. And he's correct. We, you know, I had Loki dead last. I think I think he might have had it second to last because you correctly had She Hulk dead last. <laughs> but Loki obviously wanted to be in the best live action show that we've had to date. Now I did have What If number one, and I feel like my What If call is picking up a little bit of steam here as this show has has gone on. It's not number one, but I think it may be walked so that x-men 97 could run at least in terms of animation um, and what if season two i thought was better than season one you know my one improvement for the show would be i think they should adopt the justice league approach to using arcs of two episodes and three episodes per story as opposed to one single one throughout a season i think that would be better for the show then they could cover more ground Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the show has made some real progress. And then, yeah, X-Men 97, I think, is your clear number one overall. I think I would put that over the Loki show. Loki live action would be second. And then, you know, and then kind of WandaVision is probably, in retrospect, okay. That's pretty – That's most people generally like that. That kind of has aged all right. But then we've gotten a lot of not it type of stuff, like Falcon yeah. Winter Soldier. We didn't quite get there. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I went back and rewatched Hawkeye with my kid. She kind of liked it. And then I kind of was like, oh, this show is really more a little bit for her than it is for me. But my expectations have come down so much after everything Marvel's given me. I kind of was like, I can tolerate this show right up until the point where the Kingpin's in a Hawaiian shirt and getting his ass kicked. <laughs> so that, that part still doesn't happen. Brian, Brian, before, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Correct. Correct. I was watching Endgame today. And you appreciate watching the movies, Brian. I, I, when I watch it, even though I'm done with them, by watching, I'm like, damn, man. And you watch. The moment Natasha passes away, and, you know, to get the soul stone and you see the conversation, you see the aftermath of that. They dropped the ball, Brian, when her sister, uh, what's her name? Yelena Belova. Belova confronts Hawkeye. They missed an opportunity there, Brian, to have to make Hawkeye relive that moment, Brian, to let her know that how could he have killed her? Because that was the reason she went after him, Brian. Yep. They dropped the ball on that. That moment should have been a moment, and they dropped yeah, the ball. Yeah, we talked about the time. The finale, yeah. is, the, the finale is not great. In, yeah. that, in that in that show continue and then we yeah and then we got she hulk and secret invasion and it's oh. just you know i want my i want my hours and my subscription fees back for for some of that stuff what a disappointment secret invasion was a disappointment that was an insult she hulk because we knew what the we knew the garbage that was going to be and i'm sorry for those of you who liked it there was some funny moments in there brian but it was garbage an expensive secret garbage, costly and secret, garbage. And Secret Invasion, man, is not too far from it, Brian. Yep. Which is the bigger disappointment of what Secret Invasion could have been if someone who had some probably thoughtful um, approach as to how to make this 
big because the biggest thing you had done thus far was uh, No Way Home and uh, uh, Endgame. And you... Secret Invasion, yo? Continue. And then we've heard in the aftermath of these shows that Marvel is going to be cutting back to two TV shows per year and that Bob Iger's indicated they're quietly canceling stuff on the back end. And Brad Windebaum said they they are bringing back the formal label of Marvel Television. It's becoming its own division, its own label, and they are changing the production style to a more traditional TV format with a true showrunner as opposed to having the writer or the creator sort of doubling uh, as the showrunner, director, and, and, or, and or script producers. All of that sounds fine and has sounded fine. But when you look at what's been confirmed, and this includes recent news, where's the ax? That's what I want to know. Because let's go through this list and see how excited you are and see how excited the people at home are for these different projects. Because I see a lot of stuff that should be cut. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, I, if you want to make a statement about breaking out of your slump and learning your lesson, then to me, a number of the things on this list should not see the light of day. And if that means you have to eat costs, then I'm sorry, you got to backgirl it. And that's okay. The precedent's been set. That's the thing. Take advantage of that. Zaslav already showed you the way. So you might as well, if you That'll feel be it's a new Webster's Dictionary, Batgirl. <laughs> new verb. Exactly. Okay. So remember, two shows a year. So let's go through this. Confirmed September 18th, 2024. Agatha all along. Give me a give me a zero to five. Your expect your excitement expected rating for the show before you see it. Brad, I was a bit excited to see sort of the way she sort of breaks out of this hex or whatever Scarlet Witch put on her to make yeah. her forget. And perhaps we would have developed some sort, sort of storyline that connects to other characters. I don't know, because there's some history with other characters. But instead, from what I can see, this is just her own thing, trying to start off her own witch cult or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, what is this? Where where are we going? No. So my excitement level from, from probably like a three and a half, Brian, is now to like a two, I would say, because I'm okay. still sort of seeing what they do with this and see if they're going to waste more of my time. But... Okay. Yeah. So I'm at a one. Don't care. Think the show should be cut. Okay. Second confirmed show definitely happening. March 2025. We finally get Daredevil Born Again now reduced from 18 episodes to nine episodes, but they are done. They're shot, reshot in this case. And wow. that's coming with the Netflix folks and the showrunner for The Punisher on Netflix in charge now of the show. Brian, what? Tracy and I said a long time ago, bring all those dudes back. No. There's no reason to change no. when they were fantastic. And then you sort of hear when this show finally got in front of, because Kevin's busy, when Kevin finally saw what they had done with Daredevil, Brian, he said, hell no, I give him kudos for yep. doing that. Yeah, this show effectively was canceled and then redone. If you were being technical about it, that's what happened. The show you're going to see is not the one they shot originally. So my excitement there, Brian, is a five because the, obviously there was like a hell no, we can't do this, which is a reaction that I would have probably given. And we did it the right way. And so I'm looking forward to what this show will be. Agree. Five. Same as same. Third confirmed show for 2025, although not with a release date, as we're supposedly getting Ironheart. <sighs> what was the rating again? The, the, the range? One to five? Zero to five. I said zero to five. Zero. Okay. I'm at a one on this. Yeah. I, th I think this one is, I think this one's in a tough spot. 
And I think even though there was a lot of groundwork laid in Wakanda forever to try to make people excited for this, I don't think it's going to work. I think the shadow of RDJ is going to be too large. And as good as Ryan Coogler is, he's not directing and writing. He's, he's producing, like he's in the background of this, but he's not all over this one. And I just think it's kind of DOA, like dead on arrival. I just, I just don't see it. Uh, and again, I, I'm sorry. I just don't think it should happen. Like, I just think it's one of those where like, maybe you table it, maybe there's another time for it, but I don't think 2025 is that time. So yeah, that's I agree. my opinion on that. Yeah, I agree. Now, there's a second Wakanda series that's live action supposedly happening with Denai Guerrera, um, Dora Milaje starring. That does not have a release date yet. But that's supposedly still happening as well. Are you any more excited for that live action show in Wakanda? Has there been any detail as to what's the, the plot of this no, series other than is? Just Denai Guerrera, like, Okoye is the lead, and Adora Milaje are the featured characters. Of- I would be in, only interested after hearing what this will be, because I, you know, we all know that uh, there's a young T'Challa there, and there's certainly a lot of risk because he's out there, and this would be sort of similar to Kenobi, young Luke. We know he's going to survive, right? But it'll be cool to see what what steps or actions Kenobi had to take throughout that time to prevent those things from happening right yeah with this is sort of new territory we know we pro- he'll probably survive but this is a bit of a this is different situation because we don't know what that fu- we don't know his future so if they go about it that way brian where those are the stakes i'm more interested i'm um- I'm more excited for this than Ironheart, to be honest. Certainly. Uh, I think that I think it's because I think they're less constrained. So I would probably put myself in maybe a two, two and a half on this. I think there's a few paths that can actually make this kind of interesting. You've got you at least have a couple characters who there's some cachet with people. And I think if you wanted to, you know, certainly like an an action oriented series, an espionage oriented series where like Dora Milaje are kind of like you know, carrying out missions in plain sight protecting the new young heir from assassination attempts. Like there's some things you could do with this to at least make it interesting in a limited series. I don't think you could carry this for three seasons, but if you wanted to do like six to eight good episodes of sort of like this interlude of a next generation of Wakanda on the rise, I think you could do it in a way that at least was intense and exciting. And who knows, Brian, if doom is out there, right? So who knows if his hands, sure. his fingerprints are, who knows if Aurora is around there somewhere? Who knows, <laughs> right. Brian, Right. what the possibilities are? So let's see. So that one, we'll see. Now, we got confirmation the other day, and that's what triggered us wanting to do this show. Vision Quest, which was reportedly canceled, is now alive and well again and has a showrunner, Terry Matalis, who actually was a showrunner for Picard and has worked in the Star Trek universe for a long time. Apparently, it's like a new Vision series that has been greenlit, confirmed, and is coming in 2026. But I still ask the same question, Pablo, why? I would assume, Brian, that there is some possibility to direct some potential character brian and storylines um because vision is a very interesting character let's not do you think he's interesting enough as white vision to carry his own show as the lead again i i i i asked the question he's not going to be approached by regular people brian or regular beings, or right, you know, so it'll be interesting who approaches him and who he interacts with. That's my interest in it. I just want to know why it was such a priority to resurrect this particular series. Like, did Terry Madalas go to them and say, like, this is what I want to do? Or did they call him and say, we want you to save this show? Because I feel like if he came in with a pitch and said, I've got a white vision story for you, and here's what it is, and they said, wow, that's cool. Let's yeah. tell that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll listen to that. I'll at least leave a mind open. Yeah. But if they were just like, hey, we, we need to redo Vision Quest. Can we get a, a bigger name showrunner to do that? I'm not that interested. Like the idea that WandaVision could spawn two spinoffs to me is dubious at best. <laughs>
We'll have to. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, Brian, what the. Uh, I'm curious. I'll say that. I'm okay. Curious. So you're more curious than me. I'm, what's your number? I'm at like one uh, and a half. Number, so. I'm going to say three. Okay. All right. That's not too bad. Okay. So staying in live action, we also have this. Now, this has been mostly shot at this point is the Wonder Man series starring Yaya Abdul Mateen. I would assume, Brian, that there will be some connection to Vision here. Other than curiosity, there's really no excitement for this. I don't think so. I think it's a waste of his talent. <sighs> Clown work. I mean, I think considering he's been in the genre twice, I think he's, he's, he's either drawn a bad hand or dealt himself a bad hand twice. It's a bag his work, right? I mean, Aquaman, at least he got paid on the first one, for <laughs> sure. So that that that's useful, but I'm not excited. I'm at a one for this too. I don't care. This to me, this to me, this is one that should they should have taken a hard look at at eating the cost on. But yeah, but you're right. It is it is a waste of his talent. Hopefully, Brian, this will be a, a a character or a show that proves us wrong yet again. I'm hoping that it does do well, Brian. But yeah, look. To be clear, we're rooting for all of these, right? And, we, and the, as you said, with, in the case of Loki, is a good example. We could be wrong about something that we're looking at here. But the difference, I would say, is that even as down as we were on Loki, we were not down on Loki the character or the portrayal. I don't even think you have that so far in what we're talking about here, other than Daredevil, right? We have Daredevil yeah. and Kingpin and Punisher. Those are characters we we love and, and hopefully are coming back in their true form. But these other shows, like the characters are unproven. I just don't have any reason to get excited. So we also mm. now have this uh, Nova series, which they're casting for, but they're casting for the young Nova, not Richard. Out. Same. One. One. I'm one on this. Why? Because it's not Richard Ryder. That's it's why. It's young Avenger. Because it's, it's not young Nova Avenger. Rad. That's why. Yeah. So those are the live action series. Then in the animated stuff, so look, we obviously will get... We're not even discussing X-Men 97. That's fine. We can't wait for season two. We hope we get season three. We're all good there. What if is on the upswing? We are getting season three there. Awesome. No complaints. We do have three other animated projects. So just quickly, Marvel Zombies. Now, this is only four episodes. This is a quick run, very limited series that spins off of the What If, the what if Zombies episode from season one. Uh, so we're definitely getting that. They have not said when it's going to drop, but I bet you this comes out no later than next year. Mm-hmm. So where where are you on that? Do you care? Will you watch? I don't care really. I'm not. I've never been a zombie guy. Yeah, neither, neither, neither am I. So I'm probably like a one on this as well. But then we have two not to say that's other whack. No, didn't say it was bad. Just, just don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we have Eyes of Wakanda. So this is so there's a lot of Wakanda, right? We've got two mm. live action Wakanda series. While well, Ironheart probably steps into Wakanda, steps out of it. And then we have Eyes of Wakanda animated series. No details, but is supposedly coming, you know, 2025, 2026. I could only say, Brian, that uh, I'm into what Marvel animation is and that, that, that those guys are doing over there. All I can do is wait and see this and, and, and wait until there is some sort of premise we can sort of uh talk about about what this will be yeah. before i can really give a true honest level of excitement for you know? okay so we'll put a question mark don't know enough the yeah. other one we don't know anything about given the title we might be able to at least give a thought your friendly neighborhood spider-man brian i saw that and then it reminded me of what i saw in x-men which episode nine or ten? Which where where we saw Peter Parker and Mary Jane? Yep. That cameo, which was dope. I was like, oh snap! Yeah. I'm more interested in that world. Okay. Than any new, because how many have we? What if it is get, them? If it is them, fantastic. Because the rumor is, it's not. It, so the rumor I've heard is they might because the ones we saw in the cameo were they were what how old would you say they were? I think this was after this the 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 the, the last episode. I think this was Spider Man wherever that year left off. I think that's after. 
I think this show is supposed to be around that same time frame. So I think there's a chance that it might be in the same but world. But isn't there a show of Spider-Man where he's a kid in school or something like that? Was not, a, is I think it's become this. They were supposed to do one that was like college years, and I think it's become this now. Okay. If it is, then so I'm I, there. I'm kind of like a three and a half on this. because I, I, I am, If it's that, I'm four. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at. That's it. Like you, you heard a lot of ones, <laughs> two and unders. You heard one five, yeah. which is born again, and like a TBD, like you know, for Spider Man, and like we're a little bit interested maybe in the in the Dora Milaje series. There's a lot of waste here. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we're talking about like again, if you're doing two shows a year, this is taking you out to like 2027 already, before you can even think about really new stuff. Yeah. That's a long time. If these things are not good, that's a mm. lot of mediocre television to get mm. through. Mm. Why, Pablo? Why are we bothering so much with this stuff? Don't, it, I, whoever's in there uh, uh, green lighting this, the pitch must be fantastic is all I can say. Because Bob Iger's complaining about the money, amount of money they lost on streaming telling too many stories. And like, I'm mm. looking at this and I'm like, this is going to make people sign up that haven't? It's not too ma telling too many stories. It's telling too many bad stories. Bad stories. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, really? That's the problem here. And I'm sorry, man. She Hulk, whoever was behind that, is like, how do you put your name to that? To She Hulk. How do you put your name? And then $250 million, Brian? You would think that we were talking about The Rock was on set. Every time you say numbers like that, somewhere the director of Godzilla Minus One just does. <laughs> it's like 15 million. I wish, he said, he said, I wish I had $15 million for this. That's what he said. And it won for best visual effects. An Oscar. Let us know in the comment section below what you what your level of excitement is for some of these shows. Give us your list from top to bottom as to what you're most excited for. Because there's not a lot to be excited for. And I'm pretty sure for the most part, most people will say, you know, would agree with us in terms of what we think are the best shows. So I'm interested in hearing if any of the ones that we said were going to be whack or we're not interested be at the top of your list so let us know in the comments section below and we'll see you next time on the energy report the show goes on yeah!